Hello there, welcome to Exam AZ 900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 56, Azure Pricing and TCO Calculators. My name is Tim Warner. Today's skill in the Microsoft Azure Fundamentals AZ 900 objective domain begins with Describe Azure Pricing, Service Level Agreements and Life Cycles, goes through Describe Planning and Management of Costs, and terminates in not one but two skills. One, Describe the Pricing Calculator, and two, Describe the Total Cost of Ownership, or TCO Calculator. Go to timw.info forward slash AZ900SG for the full interactive table of contents. In this demonstration, I'm going to explain the purpose of and explain the differences between the Azure Pricing Calculator and the Azure Total Cost of Ownership Calculator. They're both found at the Azure.com website. If you go under Pricing, you can get to them here, as you can see, Pricing Calculator and Total Cost of Ownership Calculator. The idea with the Pricing Calculator is that you can configure your workload as you would expect it to appear in Azure and estimate your cost. What you have down here is this interactive selector where you can go by category, compute, networking, storage. And then as you make a selection, you can add these elements down below the page. It's probably better if you have a higher resolution than what I have. <laughs> What's particularly compelling about this is that the pricing you see is live. I think I mentioned in the previous lesson that you have different prices in different Azure regions. West US in general tends to be less expensive than East US. And the reason for these differences are things like the cost of labor in different parts of the world, electricity, physical plant costs, and so forth. While on one hand, Microsoft does a little bit of legalese here. If we scroll down to the bottom, it says that these prices are estimates and they're not binding price quotes, but they are intended to be quite accurate indeed, like I said, because Azure exposes its pricing as its own set of REST APIs. This is just a layer on top of that. So for a virtual machine, for example, besides region, we can choose our operating system, what kind of compute tier, the instance size, the number of VMs. 730 assumes that the VM will be turned on 24-7. And then depending upon the resource, there may be some additional options here. Are you going to do reserved or pay as you go? Are you going to take advantage of licensing discounts like Azure Hybrid? benefit. And the idea is, once again, is that you can build out your workload. Let's say you need a virtual machine as well as a storage account. And again, we can come down and configure our region, our type, our performance tier, our redundancy level, and you can tweak some of the elements here, capacity, write operations, etc. And ultimately, you come down to the bottom and you've got an upfront cost and a monthly estimated cost. You can optionally include a paid support plan. And then finally, what you do with the result of your Azure price quote, you can export it to Excel. You can save it under your profile if you've signed in with your Microsoft account, or you can share the quote with a public unauthenticated URI that you can give to your colleagues. Let me open up the Excel file, and this can give you an idea of what your pricing calculator price quote looks like as a deliverable, again, that you would share with your teammates. It's pretty rich and robust, as you can see here. Looks like I might have added more than one instance of a virtual machine and storage account here. Whoops. <laughs> well, I've covered the concept for the exam for sure. So whereas the pricing calculator enables you to model a workload by building it, adjusting your assumptions, and then going from there, the TCO calculator, or total cost of ownership, has a different purpose. TCO is where you're looking at migrating your existing on-premises workloads to Azure, and you want to see what kind of cost savings you can realize, if any. This is important if you're tasked with generating reports that will go to the people who control the proverbial purse strings of your organization. And as you can see, there's three steps. You define your on-premises workloads, you adjust your assumptions, and and then you view the results. This can involve quite a bit of time and effort to complete, as a matter of fact. You can name your workload, determine what it is, web app or Windows or Linux servers. Are they physical servers or virtual machines? How many virtual machines do you have? And what is the platform? Are you using databases on premises? What kind of storage fabric do you have on premises? What are your networking properties in terms of outbound bandwidth? 
Then on step two for adjust assumptions, what those assumptions are specifically are number one, what part of the world are you in? How do you want to see your money represented? Number two, are you taking advantage of discounts like the Azure Hybrid Benefit where you can essentially port your on-premises licenses to the cloud and realize a potentially large discount? As the text says, up to 40% on virtual machines and up to 82% if you're going to do a reservation. We talked about reservations a couple lessons back. For your storage, are you going to opt for geo-redundant storage? What is your estimated electricity cost? What are your storage cost procurement estimates? IT labor costs? And then there's a whole bunch of other categories of assumptions that you can optionally add here. Hardware, software, electricity, virtualization, data center, database, data warehouse. And ultimately, we come to our report. And you can adjust the final elements of the report in terms of time frame, one year to five years, your region, your license, and then you get over X number of years with Azure, your estimated cost savings could be as much as, and there's your number, and then they give you some graphics that you're welcome to screen capture out and put in your reports, your total on-premises versus Azure cost over time. And again, there's some additional graphics that you can take a screen capture of and embed in your reports that you'll share with your team. You see a cost breakdown, on-premises cost breakdown versus Azure cost breakdown. And then we see some tabular information, a lot of detail. And then finally, we see down at the bottom, we can share the assessment with our colleagues with this public view link. You can save your work again, because this could take quite a while to complete your TCO. You can save it under your Microsoft account profile, or you can download the report. For example, as a PDF, a portable document format. And as you can see, it brings all of the graphics in pretty well. For learning resources, number one, go to Microsoft Learn. They have a lesson on Azure cost management. You can check that out at timw.info forward slash PTC1. For the Azure pricing homepage, timw.info forward slash PTC2. And for Azure cost estimation tips, go to timw.info forward slash PTC3. All right, another lesson down. In the next episode, we'll stay on this general theme of Azure costing, and we'll look specifically at the Azure cost management and billing blade in the Azure portal. In the meantime, my Twitter handle is TechTrainerTim. My plural site courses are at timw.info forward slash PS, and my website is techtrainertim.com. Thanks for everything. I'll see you around.